The 24-25 NBA schedule is here. It's a day that makes us infinitely more excited and impatient for the start of next season. But the Kings schedule is out. I have all the notes and things you need to know right here on Locked on Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked on Kings. Hello and welcome to Locked on Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all off season long. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. We're in the middle of the roughest part of the sports calendar right now. However, it's scheduled release day, right? So at least the calendar has been updated. We know when NBA action will be returning. But until then, all summer long, FanDuel is hooking up every customer with a boost or a bonus daily. There's something new for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports anchor and reporter for ABC 10 News. And this is a day that I absolutely love. It is a day for content that in reality is just silly because when the NBA schedule comes out, we can pretend like we know what's going to happen. But in all reality, we don't, right? We like to forecast and break things down. Oh, here's a big matchup. Oh, this could be a make or break game, right? But there are trends and thir- certain things from the NBA schedule that you always have to pay attention to. Things that I've compiled here into a uh, just a list of notes and takeaways. I've combed through this schedule thoroughly. So I, I've looked at a lot of different games, a lot of different matchups, a lot of different trends. I'm going to share with you the things that I think you need to know from this schedule, including things like the amount of back-to-backs, the amount of national TV games, some marquee matchups and things of that nature. Like There's a lot of stuff for us to get to and break down with this schedule. So I'm excited to talk through it with you. And this will not be the only episode, by the way, that we have focusing on the schedule. Today's just kind of be going to be, again, like a comb over of the schedule itself. My next episode of Locked on Kings, I'm going to dive into kind of the specifics of the schedule. And what I mean by that is how it compares to the rest of the league, right? Where where the Kings rank in terms of miles traveled, back-to-backs, the difficulty of their schedule. Because last season, around this time, the Kings had one of the most difficult schedules in the league. We talked about it at length. I will have more of that information for you coming in uh, the next episode of Locked on Kings, maybe even tomorrow uh, if I'm able to get around to it. But let's dive into this schedule and break it all down and talk about it. And we'll start with something that I shared on the last episode of Locked on Kings that was initially reported by Frankie Cardicelli of Sacktown Sports 1140 here, friend of the show, Frankie. The Kings will open up their season at home, which is very nice. October 24th against the Minnesota Timberwolves, a 7 o'clock tip inside the Golden One Center. Excited to open up the season at home, right? Last year, the Kings opened up their season in Utah. Well, I had the opportunity to go to Salt Lake City to be able to cover that game and watch that game. It doesn't feel the same, right? It doesn't feel the same. It just feels like it's, it's only right that the Kings open up their season at home. We get that first taste of Kings basketball, especially this new era of Kings basketball with DeMar DeRozan here. It's only right that it begins inside the Golden One Center in front of a sold out, crazy loud crowd, and hopefully with a beam at the end of it. Of course, the Minnesota Timberwolves are one of the best teams, not just in the Western Conference, one of the best teams in the NBA. They were last season. I don't know if they're going to be the like as good or if if, if, I don't see them dropping off significantly just because ant is so amazing. I don't know if they overplayed or outdid themselves with Rudy Gobert and and cat and that team as a whole last season, but regardless, they're not a team that you can just expect to get worse, right? So they're a team at the top of the Western conference, a team that's should be firmly cemented in the Western conference conversation. And the Kings get the chance to kind of see how they shape up against Minnesota right out of the gate. Really, the start of this schedule is pretty pretty intense. Like 
They start against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Their second game of the season is against the Lakers in LA. And five of their first seven games are on the road, including a four-game road trip with three games being in the Eastern Conference right away. So they start out their season home against Minnesota, then at LA, then home against Portland. After that, they go on the road. The first game of this four-game road trip is the second night of a back-to-back at Utah against the Jazz. Then they have at Atlanta, at Toronto, at Miami before returning home for another game against Toronto and a game against the LA Clippers. They have a lot of road games early on. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of their first 11 games are going to be on the road. So, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a good way and a bad way to look at this, right? The good way to look at it is, okay, you're getting a lot of these road matchups out of the way. You're getting a lot of this, a, a few Eastern conference opponents done very early on. You're straight up getting your games against the Toronto Raptors for the season done in the first eight games of the year. That means that later on in the season, it'll probably be more home heavy. Well, this is actually a, a, a rel- relatively balanced schedule as we go through when we talk about the longest home stands and the longest road trips and stuff like that. It, it's it's a pretty balanced schedule. There's not really a stretch where it feels like, oh my God, the Sacramento Kings are never coming home and then, oh my God, the Sacramento Kings are never leaving Sacramento, right? It, it's, it's, it's relatively balanced, but right out of the gate, they have a lot of tests on the road. If they are the road team that they've shown they're capable of being over the last two seasons, it, it should be a problem, right? It doesn't matter who the Sacramento Kings are facing. Every single game this season is going to have some significance to it, right? Against most Eastern Conference teams, we're going to be looking at it from the perspective of because you play in the West, you have to win the majority of your Eastern Conference games, maybe a significant majority of your Eastern Conference games because that might give you a little bit of wiggle room for how brutal the Western Conference is going to be. So... So many of these games care. That's why I look at the schedule as a whole. And I think some people are going to react negatively to certain things. And and I just look at it and go, I'm expecting this to be hard. Like I'm expecting everything about this schedule to look and feel difficult because that's the reality of the NBA today. Just every single team presents some sort of challenge and some sort of problem. And even the quote unquote easy games. One, we know the Kings history. They've had a problem with those easy games in the past. And two, even easy games, as we're going to talk about here, come at maybe some inopportune times. I'll, I'll get into that a little bit. But a lot of road games right out of the gate for the Sacramento Kings to deal with. Let's talk about national TV games, because that's something that everybody is always very, very interested in, right? How much love are the Sacramento Kings getting on national TV? They have seven national TV games. That includes NBA TV, which to some people, myself included, I feel like that doesn't count. But here's the good news. Only one of those seven national TV games are NBA uh, NBA TV. That means there are three TNT games and three ESPN games. But the first national TV game that the Kings have isn't until the midway point of the season. Game 41 is the first time the Sacramento Kings are going to be on national TV, period, including NBA TV. Very different from last season, right? After the Kings and Warriors schedule. The Kings had a ton of national TV games right out of the gate. This time, a lot of their national TV games are in the back end of the schedule. But their first national TV game is on January 16th at home against the Houston Rockets. That game is on TNT. On January 22nd at home against the Golden State Warriors. That game is on ESPN. No surprise, Kings and Warriors on national TV. And that's not the only time they'll be on national TV too. We'll get to that. On March 9th, it's a Sunday at the Los Angeles Clippers inside the Intuit Dome. The Kings will play the Clippers on ESPN. Their lone NBA TV game is on March 10th against the New York Knicks in Sacramento. And on the March 13th, they'll play at Golden State on TNT. So three straight games on national television, the ninth against the Clippers, the 10th against the uh, the New York Knicks, and the 13th at the Golden State Warriors. Then Tuesday on March 25th, I'm looking forward to this game, on TNT, it's the Kings hosting Oklahoma City. And finally, on April 9th versus Denver, it's Kings hosting the Nuggets on ESPN. So out of the seven national TV games that the Kings have, five of them 
are in Sacramento. Again, it goes to my belief that the NBA wants to showcase Sacramento. The NBA wants to showcase that Golden One Center crowd and that Golden One Center atmosphere. Every single, I mean, the Golden One Center is going to be sold out every single night regardless. It's going to be popping every single night regardless. But those national TV games bring an extra energy and an extra fire. So the Golden One Center is once again being showcased a lot like last season with all the national TV games. Now, there are going to be other teams with more national TV games than the Sacramento Kings. I believe seven national TV games this year is, is a decent amount fewer than last season. I'm not mad about it. That's to be expected. The Kings are still getting some good love here with uh, three games on ESPN and three games on TNT, especially with the majority of them being here in Sacramento. So I don't think there's anything really to be bothered about. There are going to be teams that we believe are worse than Sacramento that do get more national TV games like the Golden State Warriors, for example, just because of the names and just because of their draw. I don't think there's really too much to be concerned about that. I care about that less than I care about back-to-backs. Last season, the Kings had 15 back-to-backs. That was tied for the most in the NBA. This year, they have 16 back-to-backs. I don't know how that stacks up against the rest of the NBA yet. Again, I'll have that for you on the next episode of Locked on Kings when we dive more into that and compare this schedule to the rest of the league and I get all those numbers and I I, I get all that uh, that research done. But 16 back-to-backs this season, and 15 of those 16 back-to-backs are stretches of three games in four nights, right? And a lot of those back-to-backs are right out of the gate. Game three and game four, back-to-back versus Portland and at Utah. Game five and game six, back-to-back at Atlanta, at Toronto. So you got a pair of back-to-backs right there. So that's four games in five nights uh, right there. You have another back-to-back game 10 and game 11 at Phoenix, at San Antonio. I mean, you got another back-to-back game 13 and game 14 at home versus Minnesota and Utah. The Minnesota game is the first of the uh, in-season tournament. The Emirates NBA Cup is what they're calling it now. So, I mean, we got a lot, a lot of back-to-backs right out of the gate for the Sacramento Kings. I'm like back-to-backs for the most part suck. They're great from a fan perspective, right? Because, hey, I get to watch Kings basketball tonight. I get to watch Kings basketball tomorrow night. But from a player perspective, that that can beat up on a team and and, and weigh down on the team a little bit. But it is to be expected, right? And to have this many out of the gate, I suppose it's a better thing than having more later on in the season because you're a little bit more fresh you're 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 coming off of an off season of rest and so maybe trying to get a lot of these back to backs out of the way early on is good we'll find out and we'll see how the kings stack up against the rest of the league in terms of the amount of back to backs but to to go from 15 last season to 16 this season suggests that everybody in the league is playing uh, a, a few more back to backs and the fact that there are 15 stretches of 3 games in 4 nights is pretty crazy. All right, let's talk about home stands and let's talk about road trips really quick. Actually, you know what? We're going to do that in just a second here because I want to take the time right now to tell you about a great sponsor of the Locked On Kings podcast. Like I said at the top of the show, I'm talking about FanDuel, right? You love sports. We now know the NBA calendar. We know the schedule. You can go on to FanDuel right now and now that you have this schedule and you can map everything out, you can Choose whether you are going to bet the 46 and a half total wins. Are you going to go over that? Meaning the Kings are going to win more games than they won last season. Or are you going to go under that? That's just one of the many ways that you can play on FanDuel. And before we even get to basketball season, before we even get to football season, which is coming up really quick, for the rest of this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus Daily, there's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Every day when you log in, there will be some new bonus for you or some new way for you to play, make money, and have fun on FanDuel. So print this schedule out. Break it down, dissect it, look for trends, start to place your bets right now, and cash in on that sports IQ that you have. FanDuel is an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. 
All right, let us look at the longest homestand and the longest road trips. Let's get the negative out of the way. The Kings have two long road trips, both of them six-game trips. They also have a kind of doom stretch towards the end of the season, but both of the Kings' long road trips are in the second half of the year. One is in January, and one is in March, right at the very end of the season. Let's take one at a time. Let's start with the January one. From January 23rd through February 3rd, the Kings go on the road for six straight at Denver, at New York, at Brooklyn, at Philly, at OKC, at Minnesota. That is a brutal, brutal road trip. Brutal. All of those teams, well, the exception of Brooklyn, five out of the six teams are, in my opinion, bona fide playoff teams. And I could argue all five of those teams could be the best in their conference. No disrespect to the Boston Celtics. Thank goodness the Kings aren't playing the Boston Celtics in that stretch. Or that would just make it hell. But at Denver, at New York, at Brooklyn, at Philly, at OKC, at Minnesota. Now, this is coming, again, late January, early February. This is coming after a long stretch in December and early January where the Kings will be home a lot. Right, there are, there's, uh, let's see here. If you start from J uh, December 8th through like January 6th, the Kings play a vast majority of their games at home. Now that also includes the block of two games that we don't know yet, which is the in-season or N NBA Emirates Cup and whether the Kings make it into the next round or they're eliminated and then they pivot and, and, and whichever teams are eliminated, they'll they'll flex them into the schedule. It, it's confusing and it's kind of frustrating when breaking down a schedule because you don't know who they're going to play. And I hope the NBA does a better job of balancing out which teams are playing bad teams and which teams are playing good teams. Because last season, if you remember, of course, the Kings played one extra game against the New Orleans Pelicans. That was part of the in-season tournament that they got eliminated. Then after they got eliminated, they played on the road against Phoenix, another really good team in the Western Conference. So their two extra games that they played or two games that were added to the schedule were both one more game against a top-tier Western Conference opponent or at least a, a playoff team in the Western Conference that they didn't have to play initially and shouldn't have had to, like they already had their full amount of games against Phoenix and already had their full amount of games against New Orleans blocked out. Unfortunately, the New Orleans things can't be helped because you advance to the knockout stages of the in-season tournament. But even so, the Kings, extra games that they had to play were against two playoff teams while some of the other teams got to play Detroit an extra time or Charlotte an extra time. Not that that's guaranteed to have gone better for Sacramento considering the Kings uh, have, have struggled against those teams. But from December 8th, really through January 6th, a lot of home games. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine home games and two road games during that stretch. That again, does not include the two unknown games based off of what happens in the Emirates uh, NBA cup but that's a lot of home games during that stretch. So I say that to return to this six game road trip at the, in late January, early February, that brutal six game road trip. You need to build for yourself as much of a cushion, as much of a security net as possible for that road trip. Now that does not mean that you can afford to go 0 and 6 or 1 and 5 during that brutal stretch. You have to if you find a way to go 500 on that road trip, it is by far a successful road trip regardless of the position that you're in. Right? But if you handle your business ahead of time, you protect your home floor, which is one of the massive keys to the Kings being a 50 win team this season. You handle your business in December and early January when you're home a lot around the holidays win the vast majority of those games, protect your home floor, you can go on that road trip without fear. Because even if things go wrong, you are still, what you can't have happen is you struggle at home, you're like a 500 team, or you're you're teetering in between a guaranteed playoff spot and a play-in spot, and then you just get decimated on that road trip. And dropping three or four games 
can plummet you down the standings with how competitive I expect the Western Conference to be. So that's the first of their two six-game road trips. The second one is easier in terms of opponents. However, it comes right at the end of the season. Games 74 through 79, March 39th, geez, March 29th, that 39th doesn't exist, Matt, through April 7th, the Kings will be at Orlando, tough game, at Indiana, tough game, at Washington, shouldn't be tough, but the Kings will find a way to make it tough, at Charlotte, shouldn't be tough, but the Kings will find a way to make it tough, at Cleveland, tough game, at Detroit, shouldn't be tough, but the Kings will find a way to make it tough. Three out of the six games on this road trip at the end of the season are against teams that are going to be in the 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 the, the flag conversation, right? The the looking at the the draft lottery at that point in time, or they should be, unless they they surprise us. The three worst teams in the Eastern Conference you are playing on the road in the same trip at the end of the season. Now, that could be a great thing in the case of, let's say you're locked in a battle for the f- uh, fifth or sixth seed with New Orleans or with Phoenix, right? And while they're wrapping up their season playing against tough Western Conference opponents, you're going on this Eastern Conference road trip where you have a chance during this six game uh, home or road trip to really pick up some games, right? Looking at that road trip, and again, I'm forecasting without any context. We're talking months from now at the very end of the season. Looking at that road trip, you're thinking you got to go four and two minimum during that trip. Now, there is also a scenario where maybe the Kings are in phenomenal shape. Maybe they've had a fantastic season. Maybe they've already secured a playoff spot at that point. And if they don't mind dropping a game or two down the standings, they can get away with some losses here or there. But I don't think that's the mindset that they should have. That's the mindset that we should not be expecting that nor rooting for that, right? That is a road trip that you need to handle your business. The best, the first six game road trip, how brutal that is, just go 500. Find a way to tread water. Find a way to survive. But during this road trip, at the end of the season, you need to pick up games there, especially against the three, not just weakest teams in the Eastern Conference, probably maybe the three weakest teams in the NBA period, at least what we expect going into this season. Now, right before that second six-game road trip, the Kings have their longest homestand of the season, a seven-game homestand, games 67 through 73, from March 17th to March 27th. The vast majority of March, the Sacramento Kings will be home except for the very beginning. They actually are in the midst of a four-game road trip at the very beginning of March. And then other than that, I think they play, let's see, one, two, three, four, four total, five, six. (laughs) Six games in March, they will play on the road. The rest are at home. Let's see, they have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine home games in March, including the seven game homestand against Memphis, against Cleveland, against Chicago, against Milwaukee, against Boston, against Oklahoma city and against Portland. Not an easy, easy homestand either, right? You got the defending champs coming in. OKC is expected to be one of the best teams uh, in the NBA. Cleveland's a tough team. Memphis is going to be better. Milwaukee is is going to be a tough team, right? Those are not easy games. But like we've talked about earlier on this offseason, the Kings need to do a better job at protecting home floor, and that starts with expecting to beat anybody and everybody regardless of who you're playing, right? When you're playing on your home floor, you should be expected to win. So... Anytime you have a homestand that's as long as seven games, and it's coming, again, towards the end of the season, games 67 through 73, you need to hit those games hard, and you need to use that time to maybe you went 500 during that tough road trip earlier on. Okay, use that time to really make up ground or solidify a playoff position going into that final six-game road trip of the year. I'm expecting big things during that homestand. I'm expecting big things really during the month of December and early January with the amount of home games that the Sacramento Kings play. Now, in addition to those two six-game road trips, the Kings have a pretty brutal stretch from February 26th through March 14th. Nine games, seven on the road, including a pair of back-to-back. So you have to be aware of that as well 
after. And that's, that's kind of sandwiched right in between those two really long road trips. So there's a block of time from late January through early April that the Kings are going to have some pretty tough stretches on the road. If they can handle their business at home and give themselves as much wiggle room as possible and give themselves as much of a safety net as possible, they can handle those blocks, right? But if you don't get your work done ahead of time, that can make or break your playoff position right there. All right, now let's look at some individual matchups and some teams that, of course, were interested to see the Sacramento Kings play against. And when they play, we'll start with the obvious, the Los Angeles Lakers. The Kings are playing the Lakers all four times in the first 32 games. That's absurd. I think that's ridiculous by the NBA. You have two teams that, whether you want to call them rivals or not, whatever, you have two divisional opponents playing each other four times in a season, and you're going to have them all four play within the first, give or take, third of the year. It's kind of lame. Now, that means we're, we're starting the season off with a bang. Two of those Two of those games are back-to-back home games on December 19th and December 21st. So that weekend, that's a Thursday and a Saturday. That's going to be a fun weekend in Sacramento, right? With back-to-back games against the Los Angeles Lakers. And like I mentioned, they play the Lakers in LA game two of the season. So it's going to be fun in the sense that, hey, bang, we're right into it. Kings Lakers. I just wish it was balanced out a little bit more. Because last season, remember, the Kings played the Warriors three out of the four times in the first like 20 games of the season or something like that. The Kings and Warriors is much more spaced out this time. They don't face the Warriors for the first time uh, until January 5th. And then they play the Warriors once in March. Uh, They play the Warriors in February on the 21st. They play the Warriors in January uh, on January the 22nd. So they play the the Warriors kind of balanced out right in the middle of the season. To play the Lakers four times in the first 32 games, I think that's a... I think it's a little lame by the schedule makers because who knows what position the Kings are going to be in towards the latter part of the season. Who knows what position the Lakers are going to be in towards the latter part of the, uh, of the season too. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Kings and Lakers playing each other that many times. Of course, it shouldn't matter as much, but I immediately started looking for, okay, when are the Kings playing the Pelicans? Right after losing to that team six freaking times, I don't want to see the Pelicans for quite a while. And you know what? I got my wish. The Kings play the Pelicans only three times. Knock on wood, it stays only three times and and they don't get another game flexed in because of the in-season tournament. And those three times are in the latter half of the year. The first time they play New Orleans is February 8th. That's at home in Sacramento. Then they play the Pelicans again, a back-to-back in New Orleans on Wednesday, the Febu- uh, February 12th, and Thursday, February 13th, the Kings play back-to-back games against the Pelicans. So you don't play the Pelicans at all for the more- majority of the season. Then you play them three times in four games. Good. J- get them out of the way. Get them out of the way. Just get them done, right? And uh, just don't go 0-3. Just pick up one game. Kings beat the Pelicans one time this season. I'll be I'll be happy about that, right? Just, just w- get it out of your system. Flush it out. Kings Pelicans on February 8th in Sacramento, just beat them. And then I don't care what happens in the back-to-backs against New Orleans. That's not true. Of course, of course I do care because those could, those games could have pretty significant implications. Every game against a Western conference opponent can have pretty significant implications, but sigh of relief. We don't have to see the Pelicans until literally next year until 2025. Don't have to worry about the Pelicans until 2025 game 52. We got 51 games of no Pelicans, assuming again the NBA Emirates Cup or whatever the hell. The Pelicans aren't flexed in there, and hopefully they're not. We don't have to worry about the Pelicans until the second half of the year. I'm excited about that. There are a couple of games that concern me. Holiday-wise, as expected, the Kings aren't playing on the major holidays. The Kings are not playing on Christmas. Fine by me. Kings aren't playing on Thanksgiving. However, they are playing on Black Friday, against the Portland Trailblazers in Portland. If you remember, the Kings played the Trailblazers the day after Christmas in Portland, and they got wiped, right? 
So the day after a holiday at Portland didn't serve the Kings too well last season. Hopefully they can clean that up this year. Like I said, they don't play on Christmas, but they do play the day after Christmas. This game scares the living hell out of me. Home, so that's good, against Detroit. The day after Christmas, the Kings get the Detroit Pistons. Warning, 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 right? Alarms should be going off in your head here and that. That's a game that you absolutely, like, the Kings found a way to lose to the poor, uh, lose to the Detroit Pistons in Sacramento last year. That can't happen again. And now you're getting it on a potential Christmas hangover day. Yikes. Yeah. Warning with that. And then the Kings don't play on new year's Eve, but they do play on new year's day at home in Sacramento against the Philadelphia 76ers. Alarms aren't going off for that game. Philly's going to be tough regardless of when you play them. So that game, hopefully the Sacramento Kings can start 2025 out with a victory. But the day after Christmas against Detroit and Black Friday at Portland, those games scare me. I'm not even going to lie to you. They scare me. A couple other uh, important games to note. Uh, DeMar DeRozan's first game against the Chicago Bulls in Chicago is January 12th. So that'll be DeMar's return to Chicago. And then head coach Jordy Fernandez with the Brooklyn Nets. He will return to Sacramento early on in the season on November 24th when Brooklyn plays the Kings in Sacramento. So those are the most important notes and trends and things to pay attention to after combing through this schedule that I have found. Now I want to hear from you. The schedule is out. Look at the schedule. Break it down. Let me know what matchups and what games you're excited about, games that you're maybe afraid of. Talk about the road trips, just things that you notice, right? And again, very near future, probably tomorrow, I'll have another Locked on Kings podcast coming out where we'll dive into how this schedule stacks up against the rest of the league, right? How many back-to-backs do the Kings have in comparison to the rest of the league? The strength of schedule rating, the amount of travel miles that the Sacramento Kings have to deal with. This all matters. There are, there are, there are sites and platforms that I use that put all of this information into essentially like a, a, a formula that comes out with a like a score or a total or an equation that essentially works out which schedules are the most difficult. Last season, the Kings had one of the most difficult schedules in the league. I don't know if that's going to be the case again. Wouldn't surprise me if it is. But again, I expected with the schedule dropping, I expected the schedule to be tough because that's just the state of the NBA, right? It's going to be tough for the Sacramento Kings. We know this, but I think... We are ready for it. I'm very excited for the start of this season, but now the reality sets in, y'all. We're still over two months away. It's August 15th. First game is October 24th. Oof. Hey, we'll get there together. Right, we'll kill that time. We'll get there together between now and then. We'll have training camp. We'll have media day. We'll have preseason. We'll have plenty of stuff to talk about, plenty of stuff to dive into. The NBA season always becomes a little more real when the NBA schedule comes out. And I'm excited that schedule day is here. I hope you enjoyed uh, this schedule breakdown. Again, share with me any of your thoughts on this schedule, anything you want to talk about, trends that you noticed, games you're excited about or concerned about. Hit me up on Twitter at Matt George Sack. You can email me, mattgeorgesports at gmail.com or leave your thoughts in the YouTube comment section down below. Appreciate your support. Can't wait to have you join me on the next episode of Locked on Kings. Until then, my name is Matt George. You've been listening to the Locked on Kings podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network.